In a previous video, we learnt that a web API is just a way for a program to interact with the data on a web server. Most web APIs are RESTful, but what does this mean? Before we learn what REST is, and what a RESTful API is, we need to understand a bit more about how requests and responses work. When you make a request to a web server, you provide the URL and the web server returns a response. This response typically contains HTML for regular web browsing or JSON in the case of an API. In addition to these, there are additional parts of the request and response that we need to use when working with APIs. Let's start with the request. In addition to the URL, you can also specify the request method. You'll be familiar with request methods if you've used forms in HTML. By default, a form uses the get method, but you can also specify post in the method attribute of the form. In addition to get and post, there are other methods such as put and delete. Note that you can't specify these additional methods in a form in HTML, but you can when using client-side JavaScript to make AJAX requests, and of course when calling an API from other server-side code like PHP. Next, we have the request headers. These represent metadata about the request. For example, the address of the server making the request, or details about the client, such as the preferred language. Plus, they can be used to send authorization details, like an API key, or to request data in a specific format. Then we have the request body, sometimes referred to as the request payload. This is how we can send data along with the request. This is in fact what happens when a regular HTML form sends a POST request. The data from the form goes in the request body. As for the response, this also includes headers, which represent metadata about the response. Common response headers include details about the response body, like its length, the language it uses, and the type, for example, HTML, JSON, and so on. The response also includes a status code. This is a numeric value that tells us how the request went. There are several possible status codes that could be returned, all three digits. Generally, anything in the 200 range means the request was OK, and the server could successfully return a response. Anything in the 400 range means there is something wrong with the request, and anything in the 500 range means the server had a problem. If you're not familiar with HTTP status codes, you'll almost certainly have seen a 404 page, which means the URL you requested couldn't be found on the server. When this happens, the server returns a 404 status code. These are the basics of HTTP, the protocol that the web uses. Now we can move on to REST and RESTful APIs. Most web APIs are RESTful, which means they follow a set of rules known as representational state transfer, or REST. REST is simply a set of rules for how to structure an application, which are detailed here in the dissertation that defines it. However, the basic idea of REST is simply to treat objects on the server, for example rows in a database table, as individual resources that can be created, updated or destroyed. When the server returns a response, this response is a representation of the state of the requested resource. For example, details of a database record in JSON format. Unlike a regular web application, these actions are carried out using a combination of specific URLs and HTTP methods. 
For example, let's say you have a product database and you want to create a RESTful API to access it. Resources are best thought of as nouns, such as user, post, article, and so on. So in this case, product would be a resource. To get a list of all products, the RESTful way to do it would be to make a GET request to slash products. Each resource has a unique identifier, which can be a name or a number. So to get an individual product, you make a GET request to slash products, followed by a slash and the ID of the product. So far, the same as a regular web application. Now though, we start to make the requests different by using different request methods. To create a new product, you make a POST request to slash products, with the data for the new product in the body of the request. Note that this is the same URL as above, used for retrieving a list of products. Only the request method has changed. Likewise, to update an existing product, you send a request to the URL that contains an ID, but instead using the put or patch method. And to delete an existing product, a request to the same URL, but using the delete method. Note that to do all this, we only need two URLs, one for a collection of resources and one for individual ones. These URLs refer to resources, not actions. The action is taken care of using the HTTP method. So for example, slash product slash add would not be a RESTful URL because it uses the URL to describe the action. These are the endpoints a RESTful API would have for manipulating product data on the server. Any other resources would follow the same pattern. So when designing a RESTful API, all you basically need to do is identify the resources, then the URLs to manipulate these resources follow on naturally. So when someone refers to a REST API, generally what they mean is that the API uses RESTful URLs like these for retrieving, updating, and deleting data. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. If there is a video you'd like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.